All right, so we're just beginning our unit on ecology, and in this lesson I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, some patterns of life history before we really dive into populations. One of the things that we'll study as we go along um, learning about populations is life history patterns. For instance, we can consider what is the life history or how does the life progress for something like a salmon versus something like um, this bird. So the bird, of course, going to be um, having its babies in the nest, and then the babies grow up, and it might have a second round of babies, and it might even have a third round of babies, whereas the salmon lives its whole life, and when it's time to reproduce, it um, just comes and reproduces and dies afterward. So that's a very different kind of life history, and that's what we're discussing in this lesson. So the three main things that ecologists consider when looking at life history is the amount of reproduction and the timing, as I just mentioned, the life expectancy and how old the individuals are at death, so how long is their lifespan, and then how old are they when they reach maturity and reproductive age. All right, so there's two main strategies having to do with reproduction um, that species may follow. Now, this will be dependent on conditions of the environment, but within a particular environment, you might see either one of these. The first is called an R strategist. R strategists tend to have many offspring that mature rapidly. They have a high mortality rate and a low offspring survival rate and very minimal parental care and investment. An example of this would be these wheat. I mean, remember when we're talking about organisms, it's not always animals, but uh, many plants are our strategists, as well as many insects and some fish. They have lots of babies, they mature quickly, a bunch of them will die, um, and the parents really don't have anything to do with the offspring. The other strategy is a case strategy, case strategists. Um, in this reproductive strategy, uh, individuals have few offspring at a time. They mature slowly. There's a lot of parental investment, so they take care of their babies for a long time. There is a lower mortality rate and a higher offspring survival rate. So the idea here for the case strategist is invest a lot in one or a few offsprings versus have a bunch of them because some are going to die. Examples of the case strategists are a lot of the mammals, bears, deer, gorillas, humans are case strategists. So to summarize, our strategists tend to be small individuals, short lifespans, they mature quickly, they have lots of offspring, and they have little to no care of their offspring. And K strategists usually are larger, they have a longer lifespan, they mature more slowly, they have fewer offspring, and they take good care of them. Now a related uh, kind of strategy to think about has to do with whether or not organisms reproduce many times in their lifetime or only once. Um, if they reproduce only once, this is called semelparous. Semelparous. Semelparous species. An example of this would be, um, this is a mayfly. They, uh, when it's time to reproduce, they reproduce, they have their babies, and they die. Um, and then also annual flowers, such as these petunias, they reproduce only once, and then they die. Other organisms have repeated reproductive episodes. In other words, they have babies, raise them up, have another bunch of babies, raise them up. This is Iteroparis species. Iteroparis um, mammals are examples. And then, of course, a tree. A tree grows, it, has, it flowers every year, and um, may fruit, and, then, and it reproduces that way, and then um, it'll go through a whole other life cycle the next year. So many, many bouts of reproduction. But whether an organism is... Semelparous or iteroparous depends on the environment. Harsh, unpredictable environments will favor semelparous reproduction. Another thing to consider um, in terms of reproduction is the number of episodes in a lifetime. So whether you have one, like we said, semelparous, or several, there is a variation even in the several. Um, strategy has to do with, for reproduction, has to do with whether or not organisms reproduce only once in their lifetimes and then they die. This is called semelparous species. Others have, the other option is that um, there can be repeated episodes of reproduction. So you have a baby and you raise it up and then you have another baby and you raise it up. Um, this is called iteroparous species. Um, 
So these are two different reproductive strategies. Examples of this, this mayfly, would be semelparous, along with this petunia. They have only one bout of reproduction, and then they die. And contrast that with iteroparous species, which an example would be mammals or like this tree. It will flower and fruit every year. Um, it, only, it doesn't only reproduce just one time. But whether or not an organism is either one of these strategies is going to depend a lot on the environment. If the environment is harsh and unpredictable, it's going to favor um, a single reproductive um, bout in a year, or the semelparous strategy. Another thing to consider has to do with how many babies are born in a reproductive event. So for species that reproduce more than once, or even those that reproduce just once, how many babies are produced? For instance, most primates have just one or two babies, and every time they have a round of reproduction, they might have one or two. By contrast, rodents have 10, or I think in this picture I counted 15 babies. And then you consider something like spiders, they may have hundreds of babies in a reproductive bout. So there's a variation in the number of offspring per reproductive event. And as discussed before, the other thing to consider has to do with the amount of parental investment in the offspring. Generally, there's a relationship between how many offspring you have and how much you invest in them. In other words, organisms with a lot of offspring usually invest very little, and those with just a few offspring invest a lot more. So consider the lion. The lion might have one or two cubs at a time, never more than four, I don't think, and there's a lot of parental investment. They take care of them for a long time, make sure that they're fed and cared for and safe. Contrast that with the sea turtles. A sea turtle might lay, I don't know, 50 eggs and does not invest in them at all. The offspring, when they hatch, are completely on their own. Now, the second thing to consider is life expectancy and age at death. Life expectancy, this is a life expectancy curve, and this is going to vary by species. Um, this is a survivorship curve, sorry. There are three types of these life expectancy curves. Type 1 organisms, shown here, the purple. This curve shows a high survivorship until old age and then a rapid decrease in survivorship. An example of this type of organism is a human. So we have very good survivorship until later life, and then there's a steep drop-off. People all kind of, once they reach their 80s, 90s, something like that, there's a, a, a drop-off of um, survivorship. Then there's type 2. Type 2 organisms... This is the blue. They uh, basically have a steady rate of death all throughout their life. An example of this is this bird. A lot of birds are type 2 organisms. They're just kind of, some of them survive to old age. Some of them die young. It just, it's just kind of a steady rate. And then finally, there's type 3 organisms. Type 3 organisms have a high mortality early in life, and then those that survive live a really long time. An example of this is a tree. So a lot of the seeds don't make it, um, or small seedlings don't make it, but those that do survive live a very long time. Um, the other type 3 example are some mackerel fish. Apparently they live a long time. And the other type 1 example is the giant tortoise. And coming back to our R and K-selected species, R-selected species tend to have a shorter lifespan, and K-selected species tend to live longer. So here's our K-selected organism and our R-selected organism, the moth. I think rhinos live 30 years or so, 20 to 30 years. Moths live a couple of weeks. The final thing that we're going to consider has to do with how old you are, how old the organism is when they reach maturity or ability to reproduce. Again, uh, the pace of development will vary by species. Um, it's dependent on the environmental factors as well. And we tend to see our selected species maturing earlier than K-selected species. Um, this was just a little study that was done with some frogs. And, of course, they start out as tadpoles, and they at some point reach maturity. They lose their tail, and they lose their gills, and they um, change their diet. And what they found was that there was a, an increase in the rate of development when food was high, high uh, 
nutrition food was available versus low nutrition food. So the pace of development was slower if there wasn't good nutrition. If there is good nutrition, of course, you can see a, a difference here in, what does that look like, about 80 days versus 120 days, something like that. And finally, a lot of this has to do with selection pressure. So we just finished talking about natural selection, um, and predation is a big pressure on um, life expectancy and maturation rates. So this was having to do with whether or not there was a predator around. This one has to do with male size. So this is uh, body size. When there's low predators, you have larger body size, high predators, a smaller body size. And then this one is um, offspring volume. So how many offspring are the amount of offspring? Uh, fewer when there's a high predation risk, more when there's a lower predation risk. This is number of offspring. When there's low predation, fewer, high predation, higher amount. And then finally, how big the babies are, embryo weight. If there's a low predation risk, the babies are bigger than if it's a high predation risk. So all of these are affected by uh, whether or not predators are around. So that has to do with life expectancy. So again, these are the things to consider. The amount and timing of reproduction, life expectancy, and age at death, and age at maturity.